Hi everyone, Johnny here working on my film study skills and today we are looking at the rematch of Stan Fairtex and Aliona Russell-Hinya from One Championship's Empower event. For this film study I'm going to look at the grappling exchanges from both this fight and their initial encounter at Unbreakable 3. I find rematches interesting as both fighters have an opportunity to develop counters and adjust strategy based on their experiences against each other to increase the likelihood of a favourable outcome. Let's start with a comparison of the takedowns and takedown defence employed in these fights. In the first fight, Rasuhinya found success in securing the takedown by chaining off the double leg into either Kawuchigari, Kasodagari, or switching to a single leg variation, successfully bringing the fight to the mat multiple times throughout the match. Stamp's defensive response was focused on pushing Rasuhinya's head down in conjunction with an overhaul. While survivable defense, when used in this situation without an aggressive sprawl, the downward force to the legs is actually amplified. An overhook is there to create downward pressure and coupling this with the frame on the head without sprawling to break the connection with the legs resulted in Stamp being unable to prevent the takedown and being forced to play guard. In the rematch however, Stamp had been developing her takedown defence and in the first instance that Rosohinia shot in, Stamp was looking for the crossface to pry Rosohinia off her hip. With her back close to the cage, Stamp was unable to sprawl and Rosohinia tied up her left leg by chaining into the Kouichigari bouncing Stamp off the cage and getting the fight to the ground momentarily. In the scramble that ensued, Rosahinia switched to a single leg, and Stamp utilised the overhook and the crossface to create space and pressure, nullifying the forward pressure against the cage. As Rosahinia attempted to trap Stamp's left leg between her own, Stamp pummeled back to the outside and defended this secondary attack. In combat, tenacity is a virtue, and Rosahinia repositioned herself once more to draw the left leg away from the cage. Rather than trying to clamp Stamp's legs between her own, she instead stepped away from the cage and ran the pipe in a circular motion to secure the takedown. In these next sequences, I wanted to show the progression of Stamp's defense as the fight wore on. At the start of the second round, Rosahinia timed the double leg beautifully, and as a result, Stamp couldn't coordinate her hips and lower body in time to prevent the takedown. That said, later in the second round, Stamp started to find her timing turning her left leg out of the way as Rasuhinya went to follow up with the Kasodagari. The space created left Rasuhinya overextended and as she tried to bring the other leg around, Stamp was in the stronger position, landing an Uchimata or inner thigh style throw as Rasuhinya was driving forward, trying to retain her hands on the double leg. In the third round, Stamp's timing sharpened further again, this time kicking her leg back earlier, utilising her hips as she turned the corner and breaking the forward momentum of the shot. In review, you can see Rasuhinya's left leg was coming up to follow up the takedown. However, the angle change and the pressure allowed Stamp to complete a counter takedown successfully. There were many great moments in this fight, so if you haven't already seen it, please make sure you check it out, as there are many things that I am not covering in this study that are worth looking at from the front headlock sequences to Keisugatami controls, back attacks, and lots of ground and pound. As the theme of this study was comparing similar sequences from the first and second fight, the next comparison I wanted to study was Rasuhinya's Jujigatami or Arba sequences and Stamp's respective defences. I don't think there's a benefit in saying that a fighter should have done this or should have done that, however I think it's important to review sequences to identify potential technical flaws which could lead to higher percentage outcomes. Across the two fights, there are three armbar sequences to study. Although one attempt was from top position and the other two were from bottom, there are two technical points I noted consistently across the three sequences. The first is the adherence to the right, right, right or left, left, left principle. Typically, to maximize the breaking mechanics of an armbar, we look to take the opponent's right hand over our right hip towards our right shoulder, or alternatively, the left hand over the left hip towards the left shoulder. Generally, Failing to adhere to this principle allows more movement to attempt the turnout or hitchhiker escape, or alternatively, the passover escape as Stamp utilised with success in these sequences. The second technical point I thought worth noting was the intricate balance between control and chasing the finish. Too much either way and you either have all control and no threat of the submission, or alternatively, you create a scenario where you're chasing the finish but losing control. When attacking the armbar from bottom position, Rasuhinya would commit both hands to the submission, which led to missed opportunities to secure a more dominant control to attack the armbar from. Stamp's armbar defense was focused on bringing their spines into alignment, as for the armbar to be most effective, Rasuhinya required their spines to be perpendicular or in the crossbody position. This is where utilizing one arm to hook the near leg to maintain the angle, or swimming to the far leg when you're getting stacked, can allow you to flip your opponent over and chase the finish from a traditional Jujigatami position. In the rematch, 
Stamp ended up in this position on her back with her arm extended and defended by bridging her hips to alleviate pressure, whilst moving her opposite arm into a position to push the leg over her head to attempt the pass over escape. Rasahinya then switched to the shoulder lock, which meant Stamp had to make yet another adjustment again to get out of harm's way. I think both fighters deserve huge credit for this high level display and I look forward to seeing the developments in future fights. I hope you've enjoyed watching this grappling study across both of these encounters. Don't forget to like, subscribe or follow to join me as I continue to work on my film study skills. Thanks for watching.